In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a button to your expert advisors to control execution. I've got the strategy tester open here. It's paused at the moment and I have a button on screen and this button will pause or allow to run the expert advisor. So when it's running, the expert advisor can make new trades and when it's paused, the expert advisor won't make any trades. If I just restart the strategy tester, see if I click this button, now the expert can make trades. And there it has just made another trade. If I click paused, then the chart continues, but the expert won't make any new trades. So I'm going to show you how you can add this button to the chart and how you can toggle between running and paused. As usual, this video will be for both MetaTrader 4 and 5, and the code that I'll be using will be common between the two. I will be using the common toolbox code so that I don't have to write code twice and I'll leave a link in the description and on screen to the playlist where you can see that common toolbox. But there is no code that I'm writing related to the button itself that requires that common toolbox. The common toolbox is only there to run this demonstration expert. Now I'm in the MQL5 editor here and I have the pause button as I've called it Expert Advisor MQ5 here. It just has the standard property statements and then this include pause button.mqh the pause button MQ4 for MetaTrader 4 is the same. And then I've put all of the logic in the pause button.mqh file. And that way all of the logic can be common between MetaTrader 4 and 5. And I can compile either the MQ5 or the MQ4. The expert for this has no particular strategic value. It's only there to demonstrate placing trades so that I can show how to use the button. So I have no inputs for it other than the order size, trade comment and magic number, the standard inputs that I would have. I've included here the common toolbox trade custom.mqh file so that I can place trades. I'm declaring an object of type C trade custom. I'm calling that trade. Setting the magic number in the on init function. In on tick, I'm simply testing whether I can trade. So is the market open or not? Have I got auto trading turned on and so on? I'm only trading on a new bar. So I'm calling the new bar function to determine if I've just opened a new bar. And if not, then I'm going to return. And the very simple logic in this expert advisor is that if I have two consecutive upward bars, then I'm going to place a buy trade. And if I have two consecutive downward bars, then I'm going to place a sell trade. So I'm just capturing direction one and direction two, which are the close minus open for bars number one and two. And that will tell me if both of these are going up or both are going down. And then I simply say, if direction one is greater than zero and two is greater than zero, I'm opening a buy trade. And if the opposite, then I'm opening a sell trade. The open trade does nothing more than determine the difference between the high and the low for the most recent bar, then sets the price based on the ask price or the bid, depending whether we're buying or selling. The stop loss then is the price minus the range for a buy, this range here between high and low, and price plus the range for a take profit. And then for the sell, it's the opposite and then I just place that trade. Can trade, I've shown before, I'm using terminal info integer for the terminal trade allowed, MQL integer for MQL trade allowed, then account trade expert and account trade allowed. And these four will tell me whether I have an expert advisor that's allowed to trade at the moment. And new bar simply compares the I time value for the current bar with the previously captured I time value and returns true if I have opened a new bar and false if I have not. So that's the entire expert advisor that I'm running. Now let's add the button to the chart for this. I've just increased the font size to make this a little easier to see. The first thing I need to do is set up some default values that I'm going to use when I draw the button. And you'll see these used later. I'm just setting up the values here. The first one here, bool button state, that will simply tell me whether the button is clicked as in on or off. And that is my running or paused state. The rest of these are constants that I'm using to set the values for the button. So the button name is button pause. The X and Y positions, 120 and 60 
and they are counted from the button corner here and I'm setting my button in the upper right corner. Uh, there's a width and a height, so 80 and 20. Font, Arial Bold, font size I'm setting to 10. The text color I'm setting to black. And then depending whether the button is in the running or the paused state, I have different colors and different text. So I have button text for running, color for running, text for paused and color for paused. In the on init function, I'm going to create the button on screen. And I'm going to do that with a function that I'll be writing in a moment called just create button. Now when I exit the expert, that button would normally remain on screen because it's a screen object. So I'm going to delete that when I exit. And I'm also going to be setting the comment to an empty string. That's because a little later I'll be actually printing a comment on screen. So I'll just add the removal of the comment here now. And now I'm going to jump down and write this create button function. Now these are standard object functions. Object delete zero, which is the chart number, and I'm working on my current chart, so this is going to be chart number zero through all of these, and button name. That's just because if the button already exists, I want to delete it and start again. Uh, I don't know what it might have been set at the last time the expert ran, and if the expert didn't clean up the button when it finished, I'm just going to delete that here. That has no negative impact if the button doesn't exist. It will simply carry on to the next statement. And then I create with object create, chart number zero, button name, this is my constant button name. And the argument to that is obj underscore button. And then the remaining arguments here are a sub window and a time and price because it wants to position these objects on screen. But I'm going to manually position this button in the next few statements. So I'm just setting the positioning, the time and the price to zero. And then we get to the object set integer where I'm actually positioning the button on screen. All of these are chart number zero and button name, so I just won't be talking about that in the remaining statements. So object set integer, first thing, objprop underscore x distance. This is the distance on the x axis, and that's my button x position that I set in the beginning of the code. And then the objprop y distance sets the distance in the y axis, and these are relative to the corner where you set the button. The x size and y size are the width and height, the corner, as I said earlier, I'm placing this in the top right corner. And I do that because the chart offers me the option to shift the bars to the left and creates a gap on the right hand side. So I like to put my objects and text on the right hand side of the chart. And then the font, font size and color. So these are all default values set up in the beginning of the code. And then I'm calling another function that I'm about to write called set button state where I pass in the button state. And the button state when I initialized this was in the running state, so it was true. Let me go back to the beginning. Button state equals true. So that's the running state by default. And now the set button state function. First thing I'm doing is setting my global variable button state equal to the state that I'm calling here. And that's because later as you click the button, I'm going to be actually changing this value. So I know that when I first come in here during initialization, I'm passing in the button state, but later I'm going to be passing in a state that I might get from the button. Then object set integer again, this time object state, and I'm setting that to the state because the button can actually show itself as pushed or not pushed. The text, I'm setting to the button text function, which I'll also write in a moment, but that will tell me if I'm in the running or the paused state, or it will give me back the text depending I'm in the running or the paused state. And the button color will also give me back the color for the running or the paused state. And here I'm setting objprop underscore BG color, that's the background color of the button. If I just set color, then that sets the text color. And now the two functions for the button text and button color,
These are doing nothing more than testing the button state and returning either the running text and color or the paused text and color. And all of this code now has drawn the button on the screen and set its state and matched the internal state variable. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to actually capture the clicking of that button. And to do that, I'm going to use the onChart event function. Now this is a standard event handler function with four arguments. A const int id, which is the id of the event that happened, and then various parameters along a double and a string, depending on what type of event and what type of object has triggered the event. For the button, I'm only looking at the string parameter, which gives me the button name, and then the id that tells me what has happened to that button. So first test, if the string parameter is not my button name, then this is not an event that I'm interested in, and I'll just return. And then if the id, which is the event that's happened, is not chart event object click, then I'll return. So this filters out events that are not me clicking on the button. And if I get through these, then I know that the object in question is the button and that I've just clicked on the object. So I'm calling that set button state function. And here I'm getting the state from the button with this object get integer, chart number zero, button name, object prop underscore state, comma zero, zero being the sub window. And that tells me the state of the button. Remember I said that uh, button objects on screen can have a pushed or a not pushed state. So I'm getting the state back from the button, which tells me if it's in the pushed or not pushed state. And I'm passing that then to the set button state. And that will in turn set the global value and allow me to manage that then for whether I want my expert to be running or not running. Now, so far I'm not doing anything with the button state. I need to manage whether I'm trading or not. This is an extremely simple expert advisor. And so all I'm going to do is exit the on tick function here if the button is not in the running state. So I'm just testing that global value, button state. And if button state is false, if not button state, return. So when I'm in the paused state, then the chart continues to run, but my expert will not place any trades because I'll be exiting at this point. Now I can compile this and then go back to the strategy tester. And you see I have the button on chart here and clicking it changes the button state, but it still says running and doesn't change the color of the button. And that's because the strategy tester doesn't react to chart events. To make this work in the strategy tester, I'm actually going to include some code that just tests the button state uh, and doesn't wait for the chart event to happen. I wouldn't do this running live because this just creates extra load on the system, but in the strategy tester, it's the only way to react to the button. So these statements, if boolean mql info integer mql tester that tells me that i'm running in the strategy tester mode and mql info integer mql visual mode that tells me that i'm running the strategy tester in a visual mode so if both of those are true then i'm going to call set button state getting the button state from the object that's the same statement that i have down here in the on chart event so you'll recall that when I ran the strategy tester, you could see the button was changing state, but the text and the color weren't changing. So by doing this in the strategy tester now, it will detect whether the button state has changed. I'll compile again. And now with the strategy tester running, if I click the button, you can see that it's changing between the running and the paused state. That's only the strategy tester. Let me also put this onto the live chart here. But the only inputs I had were the order size, comment, and magic number. Now, I'm not going to be running this for long enough to actually make any trades. But if I click the button here, you can see there was some delay there before it changed. And I don't like that. And the reason for that is that when I make these changes, they are not immediately reflected on screen. They wait for some other chart event to happen and cause them to redraw. To fix that, I'm going to add one more statement to the set button state. And that's chart redraw for chart number zero. If 
I compile again, you can see the delay is gone because I'm forcing that to be redrawn as soon as the state changes. Now I'm going to make one more change, just make these obvious. And so what I've added in the set button state function is that I'm creating a string message using string format and I'm printing the function signature, which will simply say set button state bool state and the button text, which comes from this function. I'm going to put that into a comment and also print on the journal. And back here on the experts tab, you can see the message void set button state bool. That is the function signature and the current state is running. And I've also put that in the comment here, void set button state bool running. Paused, comment changes to paused and I now have a message to say paused. So the code is detecting the button being clicked. It's changing the visual on screen and I'm setting the value that will allow or prevent trading to happen. So buttons are quite simple. You simply use the on chart event to detect whether the button's been clicked or not. But remember that in the strategy tester, you won't get these events happening. So you may need to include code like this to simply check the button state in the strategy tester. Also, if you are in the strategy tester, remember that I've been calling this set button state on every tick because I can't detect the actual on chart event. So if you're trying to display this message, you'll get quite a lot of those printed in the strategy tester. And that's it for creating on-screen buttons. I hope you found this useful. If you have, click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. This is our last video for the year. So I hope you've enjoyed the content we've provided for you. We'll be back again in 2022. Thank you.